I'm E.G. Marshall. Man, said Mark Twain, is the only animal that blushes or needs to. And, of course, looking at it realistically, we have a great deal to blush about. According to Twain, our assorted stupidities come in all sizes and degrees of severity. But the greatest of these is self-importance. And not just the self-importance of individual people, but of entire nations. Look at some of the diplomatic games we play and how easily they become serious matters of life and death. I'm sorry, Major. I can do nothing. But Your Excellency, the young man is innocent. I'm afraid he must be sentenced to ten years in Siberia. But uh, that's the same as a death sentence. Can't you help him, Your Excellency? Please, Major. I sympathize with his youth and his ignorance. If only he had committed a crime like murder or arson or robbery or rape, we could get him off somehow. But to come into this country without a passport? Why, even the Tsar would hesitate to pardon him. Our mystery drama, The Russian Passport, was adapted from the Mark Twain classic story, especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan, and stars Robert Morse. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and True Value Hardware Stores. I'll be back shortly with Act One. We could say that Mark Twain was ahead of his time. We could also say that times never change, insofar as certain basics are concerned. Thus, the humorous sermons Mark Twain preached against red tape, bureaucracy, the timidity of public officials, the suspiciousness between countries, are just as timely as ever. For instance, here we are in a giant beer saloon in the Friedrichstrasse in Berlin. Oh, in the year 1890. And over there, near the window, are about a dozen or so American students. And they are obviously holding a party for one of their number. And now, the party seems to be breaking up as one by one the young men take their leave. And finally, only two are left at the table. But why go home now, Parrish? Why? Well... The semester starts at Yale in less than three weeks, Ned. Uh, I wish I had your chance to travel to see the world. <laughs> I wish I had your money. I'm, uh, homesick. Homesick? Yes. I'll make a confession, Ned. I was never away from home before. Uh, you get used to it. No. Every day I get more and more lonesome. Well, then why'd you make this trip? It was a gift from uh, my Uncle William. Mm -hmm. and you don't turn down gifts from Uncle William. It's a pretty expensive gift. Uh, why would he want to give it to you? Well, he said he hoped it would make a man out of me. Huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Well, Uncle William was a trooper in Sheridan's cavalry, and later on he fought the Sioux under General Miles. And then he went to California. He made a fortune in a gold mine. And he doesn't think you're a man unless you're forever shooting someone or, or knocking him down. So you see, he's always been disappointed in me. I'm, uh, I'm very shy. I, I don't know how to make friends. Mm. Well, bottoms up, Alfred. You'll feel better. No, I won't. I'll feel worse. You know, that stuff just goes to my head. That, that's another thing Uncle William has against me. You just can't do anything manly, Alfred. Alfred, why, a better name for you would be Miss Nancy. <laughs> the best way to get even, Alfred, is to have a good time. I just hate to travel alone. Well, why? Well, I'm scared. I'm scared. At least see St. Petersburg before you leave. I'd like to, but... Uh... I tell you, Alfred, there is no city in the world like it. Well, that's what everyone says. And you know, son, I, re I want to go, mm -hmm. but I just can't go alone. Yeah, it's up to you, Alfred. I already bought my ticket for Paris. I'm leaving tonight. Uh, well, I, I better be getting along. I have a lecture. Uh... Here, uh, let me let me get the bill. No, no, please. I'd like to treat it. It, it was so good to meet you and, and the rest of the boys to talk to Americans again. <laughs> Thanks, Alfred. And hey, believe me, 
There is nothing to be scared about all the time. Well, maybe not. Yeah. Have a good trip. I'll look you up when I get back to the States. Of course, I'd never see him again. I'm not the kind of fellow people want to be friends with. I don't know what's the matter with me. I'm scared of my own shadow. I'm, I'm just afraid to be away from home. Permit me to introduce myself. Major Tom huh? Jackson, United States Army, retired. I couldn't help but overhear your conversation. Mr. Alfred Parrish, you are about to make the greatest mistake of your life. Uh, I am? And it makes me desolate to think you would cut your travel short when you really want to see St. Petersburg. Well, I... Uh, you do want to see St. Petersburg. Uh... Do you realize you're practically within sight of the place now? I, I know, but... Reconsider, I... Alfred, reconsider. St. Uh, Petersburg, a wonderland in the winter. The River Neva is frozen solid. Can you believe they build roads across that ice? Roads? Not just wagon roads. Railroad. On the ice? On the ice. And they string lights across it. I, I'd give anything to go, but it's, it's, it's no use. You see, I'm a person who just can't travel alone. Alone? You won't be going alone. Whatever give you that idea? I'm going with you. You? You're going? My boy, I shall show you St. Petersburg as no foreigner has ever seen it. I know the place as well as I know my own hometown in America. Ask anybody. They all know me there. But, oh, you, you're too kind. I, you see, I, I couldn't inconvenience. Oh, it's no inconvenience at all. I was going there tonight anyhow. But I, I can't go. I mean, look, look, look at these. I mean, hmm. here are my tickets. I'm booked through to Paris. No, yeah, 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 so you are. And they don't let you change your tickets, and I can't afford to lose the money. And this 500 mark note is, it's all the cash I have, so I couldn't. I mean, it, you see, it's impossible. You must never say impossible to your friend, Major Tom Jackson. Hey, give me those tickets. Wait, 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 what are you doing? They'll change these tickets for me. They all know me at the railroad station. Everybody knows me. Now, you just sit right where you are. But, uh, and better let me have that 500 mark bill, too. We, uh, may have to pay a bit extra for your new reservation. But, Major... But he was already out the door. It was all so sudden, so... It was so incredible, so impossible. It, it, could, it could only happen to me. I wanted to shout, Stop that man! But my lungs, they were empty. I wanted to, I wanted to run after him, but my legs were paralyzed. This man, this sharper, this confidence operator, he's stolen my money, my tickets. I've got to catch him, but I can't even get out of this place. I, I don't have the money to pay my bill. I'll have to explain all this to the waiter. Yeah. Th that man who is just here, you, you understand? Nick's cut stand. My, all right. My money, my money, my my tickets. Was is? I, I'm trying to tell you. Are you speaking Sie Deutsch? I am trying to tell you that he took my money and my tickets. Yeah, yeah. Very good. The waiter just shrugged his shoulders and walked away. I didn't know what to do or where to go or what kind of a fool I was to allow a stranger to just walk off with my... With my and suddenly, his hand was on my arm, the Major. Quickly! There's not a moment to lose. Come! But, but, but where are we? I'll explain on the way. Hurry, right out the door. Let's go! But where? Cab! Hi there, cabby! Oh, confound these people. I, I was delayed at the ticket window. A new man there. He didn't know me. Oh, there you are! Right here, cabby! In you go, Alfred, my boy. You still haven't told me. All in good time. Uh, now, Russian consulate, cabby, and let them fly! No man at the window didn't know me. Wouldn't make the exchange. Too irregular. Well, then... I had to hunt up an old friend, the station master himself, the grand high mogul. All right, whoop along, Gabby. Don't let him go to sleep on us now. Well, it all took time, but it's all right now. Your luggage is rechecked. Fair ticket, sleeper, all exchanged. Got the documents in my pocket. But... Uh, what? What? I left the beer hall without paying my bill. Oh, that's all right. They know me. Everybody knows me. I'll square it for you next time I'm in Berlin. Push them along, Cabby. Push them along. He was a big power. 
powerful-looking man, just like Uncle William. But unlike Uncle William, he had such a, an honest, uh, open face. How could I have even thought of mistrusting him? Suddenly I felt, I felt much better. Maybe some of his sublime self-confidence might rub off on me. And so, feeling better than I had ever felt in my life, I, I leaned back and enjoyed the ride to the Russian consulate. But we must have arrived there too late because the guard at the gate tried to stop us. However, the Major merely said, That's all right, Sergeant. I'm Major Jackson. They all know me inside. At least that's what I think he said because he said it in Russian. Anyhow, he just led me past the soldier, up the steps and into the building. There was a clerk sitting at a desk, and the major began to talk to him. I, I couldn't follow a word of the conversation because it was all in Russian. Impossible. Impossible. It is after hours. Oh, come now. You can surely visa this young man's passport for St. Petersburg. But, my dear sir, I am not authorized. Then fetch the consul. But the consul has gone. And he'll be back? Tomorrow morning. Thunder. Major, Major, is everything all right? Just fine, Alfred, my boy. Just fine. Well, now, look here, my man. I'm Major Jackson. He knows me. Everybody knows me. Just visa the passport for me yourself. <laughs> what? Well, there's nothing to it. Just visa the passport yourself. Oh, no, 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 no. That's irregular. That's... Oh, oh, oh no. But no. our train leaves tonight. I couldn't. I, I'm a married man. Everybody knows I me. have children ask me to do anything, but not to visa a passport. No, I... I'll tell you what we'll do then. Here's the stamps and the fee. Have him visa it in the morning and send it after us by mail. He'll do that, I know. Well? Well, he may. Uh, <clears throat> perhaps he may. May? He will. He knows me. Everybody knows me. I, I, I'll tell him what you said, but, uh, you know, you realize that you will get to the frontier 24 hours before the passport will arrive, and, and you cannot spend 24 hours at the frontier waiting for it. There are no accommodations. Who said we're going to wait at the frontier? Send the passport along to St. Petersburg. But they will stop him at the frontier if he has no passport. They won't let him into Russia. Very well. Very well. The chief inspector knows me. Everybody does. I'll be responsible for this young man. Oh, the penalty for being in Russia without a passport is ten years in Siberia. Uh, oh. Damnation. Major, did, did I hear you say damnation? Is something the matter? No, no, no. It's all right, Alfred. I promised you St. Petersburg. I will get you St. Petersburg. <clears throat> now, look here, my man. You just get the consul to visa that passport and mail it to St. Petersburg first thing. But I... Don't worry. Don't worry. Yes, I can fix it. They all know me there. Uh... All the authorities, everybody. Alfred... Say good night to this very kind gentleman. I, I don't know Russian. That's all right. Say it in English. Uh, uh, good night, sir. Major, did you take care of everything? Let's be off to the train station, Alfred. You don't have a worry in the world. Somehow, things cannot possibly run as smoothly as the Major would have us, or even himself, believe. But why can't they? Well, we're about to board the Berlin-St. Petersburg Luxury Express, where further intrigue and excitement await us. And people will be around to inquire about that passport in just a few moments, when I shall return with Act Two. is Major Tom Jackson, this big, bluff, and charming man who seems to sweep all objections aside and whose slogan seems to be, everybody knows me. Well, no matter, because at this time, he seems to be exactly what poor, shy, self-effacing, timid Alfred Parrish needs. Here they are on the luxury express bound from Berlin to St. Petersburg at their ease in a beautifully appointed compartment sipping expensive wines and enjoying all manner of delicacies. What a life, says Alfred Parrish. I never knew life could be so happy, so easy, so comfortable. Yes, life I see now is a matter of who you happen to fall in with. 
If my Uncle William had been a man like Major Jackson, how different everything might have been. Well, maybe it's not too late now. For the very first time, I don't feel alone or friendless or unimportant. And what's more, I'm not even homesick. My boy, look at yourself in the mirror. It proves my point. What point, Major? We advertise to the world exactly what we are. What does your face usually proclaim? Fear. Uncertainty. Now, that won't do. But, but there are times when I am afraid and uncertain. Shouldn't that be your secret? Now, my boy, look in the mirror and smile. Just smile. <laughs> That's it. Now, here's what I want you to say to yourself. I, Alfred Parrish, fear nothing and nobody. Oh, but it isn't true. Say it. I, Alfred Parrish... That's it. I, Alfred Parrish, fear nothing and nobody. You see? You see? What? What? Whose face is that in the mirror? Who is that cocky, confident, self-assured, important young man? It can't be me. Ah, uh, uh, but it is. It is. Uh, but, but, but I don't feel confident. Who's to know the difference? You see, to the rest of the world, you're a tiger. Well, uh, that's my great gift. I've taught hundreds, thousands how to become commanding personalities. You, you have? Oh, yes. Especially among the crowned heads of Europe. Y- you mean king? Oh, yes, sure. They know me. They all know me. Now, you take the crown prince of Austria. He has a very strong father, much like your Uncle William. Oh. And the crown prince of England. Why, he's a man of almost 50 and still under his mother's thumb. Ah, well, I taught them the tricks. Yes, indeed. You've got to show your colors. And if they aren't your true colors, host to know better. Now, the trick is to look a person in the eye. All right, do it. Look me in the eye. Oh, but you have to hold your head up. Huh. See what it does for you when you hold your head up? Snap your fingers. I I never seemed able to get the knack of it. That's no matter. Now say to me, my good man. M- my good man. Oh, no, 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 no. Put some starch in it. As if you're doing me a favor by even talking to me. Now go ahead. My good man. Ah, now you're getting the hang of it. Well... Hey, we, we, we seem to be slowing down. Of course. We're just about at the Russian frontier. You know, so much of what you say, it is so true. It's, it's not really what you are. It's what, it's what other people think you are. And what would you like to make people think you are? Well, I, I would like to be treated with respect. Mm, such a little thing to ask. And you know how to get it? No. Easiest thing in the world. All you have to do is demand it. Oh, here we are. About to embark on a great new voyage of discovery for you, Alfred. Russia. Ancient, mysterious Russia. Is this where they'll ask to see our passports? Of course. Well, uh, come to think of it, when we were back at the consulate, you know, the Russian consulate back there in Berlin? Yes, well, I don't exactly remember your bringing my passport away from the consulate with you, but, but of course you did. I mean, I, I, you, you do have it, don't you? Uh, no. No. No, it's, uh, you see, it's coming by mail. C- c- coming by m- mail? Certainly. I-, I have heard stories of what can happen to foreigners in Russia who do not have passports. The chief inspector at the frontier knows me. I'll explain to him that your passport's en route. It'll be all right, you'll see. Oh. Now, just look in that mirror, Alfred. Let's see that cool, calm, clear-eyed look of confidence. But I don't feel it. Let's see it anyhow. At the frontier, which was just a a guardhouse and fence, everyone got off the train, and we waited while the slow-moving line inched toward the inspectors. My heart naturally was in my mouth, but I looked at the major, and he was so supremely confident I couldn't help but feel everything would have to be all right. Now, you're not to worry. I said I'd make it all come out right, didn't I? Yes. As a matter of fact, there's no reason why you and I should stand out here freezing in this cold. But, but we have to wait till we get to the head of the line. You just stand here. 
I'll go up and explain matters to the chief inspector. We'll be sitting cozy and warm in our compartment in three shakes. Major, is everything all right? Damnation. Well, what, what happened? What it's happened? a new chief inspector, and I don't know him. Oh, no, no. This is impossible. I'm not going... Don't, 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 don't. Steady, no. lad, steady. I don't have a passport. I told you it'll be all right. Just trust the old major. This new inspector, he's as nearsighted as a shad. <laughs> I, I watched him examine the other people's passports, and it's a fact. But you don't... Just listen. I'll go up, get my passport approved, and then I'll step over to the fence. You see over there? Yeah. Where those peasants are standing with their packs? Yes. Yeah. Now, you just mosey up against that fence. Oh, no. And I'll slip you my passport right through the bars of the fence. What are you saying? Then you get on the regular inspection line. Hand it over and trust in Providence and the fact that the inspector has the eyesight of a shad. You'll pull through. Never fear. But the description on the passport... Ah, what about it? It's, it is your description. It describes a man of, uh, of 50, and I'm only... That's a... all right. I told you the man has the eyes of a shad. shad. He couldn't see the difference if his life depended on But my life depends Don't on Don't you fret. It'll come out right as nail. But when I hand him your passport... You won't be handing him my passport. It'll be your passport. Well, what do you mean? You'll hand it to him as if it's your passport. As if there can be absolutely no doubt. As if you're a man of importance, whereas he is just a flunky. Let him see all that in your no, face. Oh, no, I can't. I can't do it. I you can't. You must. I, no, I don't have to. I, I can wait. I can wait right here and take the next train back to Germany. There won't be another train until tomorrow morning. That's all right. I'll wait. Where? Uh, uh, right here. What? Here? Yes. In this open field, in the snow, in the dead of winter? You know how cold it gets. But I can't go any further. I don't have a passport. But you do have a passport, old boy. Now, Alfred, please. It's easy as pie. Old Fish Eye will just wave you in. I don't know if I can go through with this. Of yeah. course you can. Confidence, Alfred. Remember what I told you about confidence? But how could I have confidence? I was in a daze. The Major had moved up ahead. He had his passport examined, and, and now he, he sauntered over to the fence. He motioned for me to come forward, but I was in a, a, a daze. Somehow, I got to the fence, and the Major pressed the passport into my hand, and then he was gone. I managed to get to the end of the line. Everybody was headed toward a tall burly, uh, bearded officer, the fiercest looking man I'd ever seen in my life. He could even have frightened my Uncle William, and he kept shouting, Sergeant! Sergeant! Which I later found out meant enter. And then before I knew it, there was, there was no one in front of him but me. And he held out a big, beefy hand for the passport, and before I knew it, he had snatched it from my grasp. And his eyes bore deep into mine. They were eyes that were filled with hard and, and pointy lights of ice and steel. And they, and they didn't look like the eyes of a shad or any other fish either. But they were, they were eyes to pierce into the very marrow of your bones. And he looked at the passport. And he looked at me. And he looked at the passport. And he looked at me. And he looked at the passport. And he looked at me. And I was about to scream. I, I confess. I confess. When suddenly he thrust the passport back into my hand and bellowed, Judge it! Judge it! My boy, you were magnificent. Uh, well, uh... I could hardly believe it was you. Why, you slapped that passport into his hand and looked at him. <laughs> I believe it was the most supercilious look I've ever seen. I was scared to death. Looking at the two of you, I would say he was scared to death. Oh, no. Alfred, you have no idea how commanding a presence you have once you turn it on. Is, is that a fact? Hey, see? I said to you, trust in Providence. And it always comes out right. The fact is, you were meant to see St. Petersburg, and nothing is going to stop you. Yes, it... Uh... It does seem to be working so far. My boy, this is only the beginning of a new Alfred Parrish. <laughs> Parrish? Yeah. 
the adventure. Oh, I... <laughs> you mean you wouldn't like that? Oh, no, I certainly... All it takes is confidence. 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 Huh. Confidence. All I had to do was just listen to him and life became worth living. It was a, it was a joy. He made me feel that everything and anything was possible, that, that whatever I tried would have to succeed. And Oh, yes, by the time the train reached St. Petersburg, I was in what my mother would call high feather and, and fine form. And we took a cab to the Hotel Europa, and we walked into that lobby arm and arm. Your best board major? May I? Thank you. And may I have Mr. Parrish's passport? No, it's perfectly all right. The young gentleman's passport is on its way. Uh, major, are you saying this gentleman does not have a passport? It's coming by mail. Uh, but at this point, it does not exist. It exists in a mail bag, in the mail coach, on tomorrow's Berlin St. Petersburg Express. But it does not exist here and now. Is something wrong, Major? R remember what you told me. Don't take guff from these foreigners. Yeah. Well, now look here, my man. You know me. I'll be responsible. Well, I wish I could accommodate you, Major. Major, Major, what, what is wrong? He has no passport. Therefore, I must ask him to leave the premises. Now, just a moment, my good fellow. I father. cannot allow him to remain under this roof another moment. Major, uh, please explain. Major, me. this young man is an illegal person. He has no status. He must leave. I must call the police. Major. I have no choice. I must call the police. Major. No, my friend. Surely you wouldn't do that. You couldn't. Why, a little thing like a passport that we can straighten out and yes, let me out. the police immediately. Major, was it was that word that he used, police? No, 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 boy, don't, don't get hold of yourself. Whatever you do, don't, don't faint. Oh, oh, oh my lord, a clerk, clerk, oh, do you have some smelling oh. In just a moment, Major, as soon as I complete this call to the police. Police. <laughs> Has Major Jackson come to the end of his rope? Although uh, we shouldn't put it quite that way, for if this is the end of the rope, at the end of that rope, we will find poor Alfred Parrish. Yes, a long, twisting rope that holds together a convoy of prisoners bound for the snowy wastes of Siberia. Is there hope for poor Alfred? Well, there's a third act... And I shall be here with it in just a few moments. Oh, well, now, uh, you know your own name, and uh, you know who you are. But can you prove it? For instance, if you were to find yourself among strangers, your word would be meaningless. Proof of your identity could only be established by a piece of paper, which, if you consider it, is rather ironic. Given a choice of believing flesh and blood or lifeless paper and ink, we choose the document every time. How sad. How catastrophic for Alfred Parrish. There's no need to call the police. Major, this young man has no passport. This fact makes him a criminal. If I fail to report him, I become an accessory. Major, Major, what have you done to me? Uh, uh, hello, police. I'm going to be arrested. Oh, pl Major, this is the end. Never say die, my boy. Now come with me. Where? Quickly, out the door. Hurry. Now don't fret. It'll come out all right. Hi, hi. Hello. Cab me. Cab over here. Major, what is going to become of me? The last time I got into a cab with you... In you go. <coughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, cabby, palace of the general of the secret police. And turn him loose, cabby. Let him go. Make him whiz. Major, I I'll never see my home again. Nonsense. Prince Boslovsky knows me. He knows me like a brother. He'll fix everything. He will. You know what he'll say? He'll say... You're not to worry about any of this nonsense. Major, it's just that I heard these horrible stories. That's ridiculous, my boy. The prince and I are old friends. He'll deny me nothing. Impossible. 
about your excellency. Out of the question. It's such a little thing. <laughs> it cannot be done. Uh, Major, what, what, what is he saying? What, what, what's he saying? Oh, uh, well, yes. Uh, my boy, he's being very sympathetic. Oh. You have nothing to worry about. Major, I'm afraid this interview is ended. But your excellency, I will be responsible for him. Major, I must say that you have done an insane thing to bring this lad into the country without a passport. I marvel at it. Why, it means ten years in Siberia for him. And there is no way to prevent it. I marvel at this, Major. What was what, what, he saying? Start to groan. Start, why? And moan. Oh, but, mama. Oh, why, mama. Why? It might help. Uh, and so, Major, if you'll excuse oh, me. La, la. Splendid. Oh. Bernhard herself couldn't beat it. <sighs> If it were anything else, if only he had been guilty of murder, oh. arson, rape, a pardon would be a mere formality. But to be without a passport, even the Tsar himself would hesitate. Your Excellency, all I ask is 24 hours. In that time, the passport will have arrived. I am very sorry. Sir. Oh, Mama! Your Excellency, you're a father. You have a son. Can't you find it in your heart? Oh. It was a foolhardy thing to do. I agree. You deserve a sharp lesson. Without question. Oh. All right. It's against my better judgment. And if it comes out, it could destroy my career. God will reward you. I give you exactly 24 hours to the minute. If the passport has not arrived, if it is not in his possession, do not dare to come near me again. It's Siberia for this young man without hope of reprieve. My dearest mother, when these sad lines shall have reached you, your poor Alfred will be suffering a fate worse than death. Through my own fault and foolishness, I have fallen into the hands of a sharper or, or a lunatic. It doesn't matter which. But I, I think he is only mad, for he has a good, kind heart, and he tries so desperately hard to help me, but each attempt just ends in complete disaster. And in a few hours, I shall be one of a, a nameless, hopeless horde plodding the snowy solitudes of Russia, bound for that land of misery and oblivion, Siberia, and there is no escape. An officer of the secret police sits silently in my room, watching, waiting. Well, how'd everyone sleep? I must confess, I popped off at once. Well, Alfred, had your breakfast? How can you... Think of food. Oh, come, 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 come. A hot meal will make you sing another tune. Do you realize I am going to be sent to Siberia? I realize nothing of the sort. Even now, your passport is on the train. It's coming here. It will arrive well ahead of schedule. There isn't a thing in the world to worry about. And before I knew it, he had convinced me. Once again, he had convinced me that there wasn't a thing to be worried about. And there we were, sitting in the dining room of the hotel. Uh, shouldn't the mail be in by now? Uh, yes, yes. I would say the train has already arrived. The mail has been sorted. And delivery to the hotel is a matter of minutes. In about 45 minutes, the 24 hours will be up. Suppose we saunter over to the desk and see my old friend behind the counter. Major, you are sure the Russian consulate in Berlin sent it? My boy, nothing to worry about. Nothing at all. Yes, gentlemen. <clears throat> now, is there any mail for me? Uh, the mail has not arrived. It, it, it hasn't arrived? No, no, Alfred, there's nothing to be excited about. Ah, uh, is it do soon? Usually comes at this time. A few minutes earlier, a few minutes later. Now, you see, my boy, no problem at all. Uh, tell me, uh, <coughs> have either of you gentlemen seen the afternoon paper? Interesting article here on the vault. Uh, the uh, 
Vault? Yes. Uh, actually, it is a prison cell on wheels in, in which serious criminals are transported to Siberia. Siberia. Uh, the convict is placed inside, inside and the door is then closed. Yes, it cannot be opened Can't again. Be open. No, not until the vault arrives in Siberia. Cyber why, why not? Well, because the only key that opens it... Is in, in, in Siberia. Suppose, suppose someone is is placed in there by mistake. Well, I would say uh, <coughs> it's his hard luck. He can't be taken out until he reaches Siberia. Siberia. But the chances are uh, he wouldn't get there alive anyhow. Uh, Alfred, I I don't feel so good. Confidence, my boy. Confidence. The mail will be delivered at any moment, and all your troubles will be over. Excuse me? Telephone. Uh, yes. Vrandes? Yes? Was that? Oh, I see. Thank you. Goodbye. Well, uh, gentlemen, if you're waiting for the mail, I'm sorry to disappoint you. The uh, Berlin train has been delayed. Wait, what, could, what are you saying? You had an accident on the track. The mail. The, the, the mail that... The mail must be delivered, don't you understand? Well, it will be delivered, but uh, three hours late. Three hours? I don't, I don't have three hours. I'm done for. No, my boy, chin up. I'll think of something. Y they, they'll put me in, you, you heard him, the vault. The vault, it's a, a steel wagon dragged to Siberia like an animal in a cage. I've got it. No, what do you, you've got, it's no use. Nobody can help me. Nothing can help me, Si... Period. Forget the passport. Forget, what do you mean, forget the passport? Cheer up. Huh? We can do without it. Guards, come along. We're headed for the American embassy. I had that card up my sleeve all the time. The minister knows me. We were wounded together at Cold Harbor. Been chums ever since. Major, you, you wouldn't hold out false hope to a poor condemned... Everything's splendid. Our troubles are at an end. If we ever really had any... We are going to get you a new passport. Well, uh, I am only a secretary of the legation, you see, and I, uh, I wouldn't like to authorize a passport while, while the minister is on Russian soil. You, you have no, no idea of the responsibility. All right, send for the minister. <laughs> well, that's easier said. You see, he's up in the wild somewhere on his vacation. Great Scott! What are you great scotting about, Major? The prince gave you 24 hours. You, you've got an hour and a half left. The train is just due. The passport will arrive in time. The train is expected to be three hours late. This lad's life is ebbing away. In that half hour, he's the same as dead and damned to eternity. I am. Oh, I see the ghastliness of the situation. But what can I do? Hang it. Write him a passport. Well, it's, it's impossible. It's totally impossible. How do we know who he is? Now, you, you yourself only met him two days ago. So, you see, there is no way in the world to identify him. Oh, he's lost, lost. There is no possibility of saving him. Now, look here. Now, the rules, you... say, the rules say identification must be positive. <clears throat> now, would you want me to make a mistake and lose my job? Oh, Lord, it's the last day on this earth. For Alfred Parrish. I will be responsible. Well, wait, wait, wait. Shh, 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 wait. Is your name Alfred Parrish? Yes. Hmm. And, uh, where are you from? Well, uh, Bridgeport. Bridgeport? Oh, yeah. Um, Were you born there? No. 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 New Haven. Uh, Mr. Secretary, is it possible shh, that you. No, 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 no. I, I must be positive. Uh, uh, how long did you live in New Haven? Hmm? Uh, I uh, till I was when I was fourteen. Mm -hmm. I, I came back uh, two years ago to enter Yale. Yeah, what, 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 when you lived in New Haven, what street? West Street. Yes. What street? Uh, mm -hmm. It was Parker Street. Mr. Secretary, if you can identify him, please I do so. Must be positive beyond the shadow of a doubt. The time is running out. The secret police will soon drag him. Shh. What number, Parker Street? What number? Hmm? Think, lad. Think, think. The clock is moving. But it didn't have a number. Ha-ha. There. Shouldn't that... Now, what, what kind of house was it? Brick. Two-story. A, a flush with the sidewalk? Small yard in the front. Iron fence? 
Mm, no palings. Mm-hmm. Mr. Secretary, there's almost no time left. Now, what do you see when you enter the door? What? What is the... What is the difference? Why do you want to torture me? I'm as good as dead. What do you see? I don't. A narrow uh, hall, uh-huh. door at the end. Mm-hmm. Right? Hat mm-hmm. rack. Uh, parlor? Y- yes? Mr. Secretary, when the clock strikes six, this boy will be arrested and lost to all the world. Carpet on the floor. Yes. yes. Now, what kind? Old-fashioned Wilton. Design? Oh, hawking party on horseback. Uh, room next to the parlor? Uh, dining room. Did your parents own or rent the house? We, uh, owned it. Uh, did you, d- did you have, a, did you have a nickname among your playmates? Answer him. Oh. Mr. Secretary, surely by this time... Sir, sir, no, sir, we have clearly defined procedures. Hmm. Now, did you have a nickname? Well, they, uh, they called me... Miss Nancy. Surely, sir, that should be something. Any ornaments in the dining room? No. Uh, no, 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 none at all? Think, lad, think, think. You have less than a minute? You mean there wasn't even a picture? Oh, but you said ornament. Yes, yes, and, 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 and what did your father think of the picture? Speak, yes, Alfred, speak, speak. I, I can't tell you what he said. You must. Quick, quick, we're almost out of time. Home and liberty. Oh, have pity. Or, or death in Siberia depend on your answer. Well, have pity, he's a clergyman. Get out with it. What did he say? He said, he said it was the, the hell firedest damn nightmare he ever saw. Saved! Oh, I will write you a passport. I can now legitimately identify you beyond any shadow of a doubt. I have lived in that house. And I painted that picture myself. Saved. Give thanks, my fortunate friend. You see, I told you, trust in providence. And let us be grateful to God that he made this artist. If indeed he really did. Did Alfred have a good time in St. Petersburg? We don't know. Mark Twain doesn't say. And although what he writes is always fascinating, what he doesn't write is, in many cases, even more so. For instance, who is Major Jackson? And why? A most mysterious man. But uh, this spot on the dial is the place where such people are encountered. I shall be back shortly. (laughs) Stories must have heroes and villains. And Mark Twain's tales are filled with a great many of each. But not all villains are actually conscious of their villainy. It is possible for the greatest crimes to be performed by fairly decent people in the routine performance of their legitimate duties. But you'll find nothing routine here at this spot on your dial, seven times each week. Our cast included Robert Morse, Robert Dryden, Russell Horton, Earl Hammond, and Dan Ocko. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Burn him! Then let it be done day after tomorrow, the 21st day of the... ...by noon. This is not the, um, the usual manner. They do not kill. They hold for ransom. Well, Clarence, don't worry about it. Well, you say I'm not to worry, but... They burn me at the stake high noon the day after tomorrow. No, Clarence. They won't be able to swing it. I won't be here. Well, I wit not what thou sayest, Sir Boss. Where shall thou be? In Hartford, Connecticut. Oh, is is that the place of magic and enchantment where Sir Kay captured thee? Oh, it's a place of magic and enchantment, I guess. In some ways. But, But dost thou intend to return there? Oh, I don't have to return. I never left. Uh, (laughs) <laughs> Sir Boss, my poor wits cannot understand. Don't worry about me, Clarence. I'm still there. It's... Oh, well, all this is only a dream. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. 
Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>